Welcome to Designments. This video is about my capstan winch project for my Series 3. I wasn't planning on making a video for this, so most of this will be stills taken throughout the build with a small video clips here and there where I actually filmed something. So, why build one rather than buy one? Well, having changed the 2.25 petrol for a V8 with a 5 speed box, the traditional ferry, aero parts, and super winch capstans just wouldn't fit because the crank nose on my conversion no longer lines up with the hole in the front of the chassis cross member. This presented a bit of a problem. Um, I've overcome that by making the winch hydraulically driven. The system I've come up with uses a 20cc Perev gear pump with an electromagnetic clutch from an aircon compressor grafted onto the front. This allows me to have a pump running only when needed. The winch body itself consists of a commercial gearbox driven by a 100cc Perev Girala motor. It's massive, massive overkill for this application, but it does mean that if I operate within the gearbox limits, hydraulic pressure and load on the pump clutch need not be that high. Mounting the pump was interesting as there's really only one place to fit it, which I'll explain in a moment, and not a lot of space there. But before going any further, I need to test the whole setup out, so the lathe got some misuse. Setting up a pulley in the three jaw was far easier than making an arbor for the motor and mounting it up somewhere. Up to this point I'd never run the hydraulic motor so this was a good time to test it and double check it actually worked before spending a lot of time on it. Thankfully it seems to be in good shape and yes I couldn't help taking a little peek inside but I'm afraid I didn't get any picks. The most challenging part is probably this. The spline collection for the motor. I spent hours looking and I've still got no idea what the actual spec for the splines is. I only have a small lathe, no indexing head and no milling machine. The motor has 14 splines of this unknown spec, so I found a 28 tooth chain, change wheel to use and built a setup for the lathe headstock to use it as an indexing head. A few bits of bracketry turn the top slide into a manually actuated shaper. There's a bad video of this and I'll link that down below. Apologies for the quality. All I've done is remove the lead screw from the top slide, indicated it parallel to the bed and mounted a form tool in a boring bar. The setup's deliberately dangly to stop me heaving on it from rocking the tool about. The tool's advanced with the cross slide and the carriage is locked. It's crude, but it actually worked really well. The part you see here is made from Mehanite, which is a consistently soft, free machining brand of cast iron. Perfect for the job, it was nice and easy to shape, and it comes out beautifully. Here's the result, it fits like a glove. A second part was needed to adapt this to the gearbox input, which happily has a simple keyway. Seats for the keyway were cut in the lathe using the vertical slide and a couple of small end mills. Given the size of the lathe, I'm quite happy with the result. The motor and gearbox adapter being in two parts gives an opportunity to fit brass shear pins. While I had the setup in the lathe, I also cut the keyways for the main shaft gearbox and winch bollard connection. Making a collar to join the motor to the gearbox was the next challenge. This is mostly bits of scrap steel I had laying around marked up with some printed out CAD templates and cut with a slitting disc or the plasma cutter. Basically two plates with a piece of cold drawn pipe welded in the middle. I had to do some turning to make sure everything was true and concentric as the coupling doesn't have much room for anything to be running off axis. Luckily both motor and gearbox have some good datums and I managed to get it spot on. Gearbox originally had a large mounting plate for an electric motor. It's made of alley and rather large so I decided to make an entirely new mount integral with a new piece to join the motor. This needed to be done carefully as the back of the plate sits against the input bearing and sets the bearing preload. You can see me measuring it here with the plastic gauge just to double check. This got complicated by the need for the oil seal to fit from the back of the plate too as its diameter is bigger than that of the tube. I ended up with a two-piece design with the boss setting the bearing preload being a separate piece allowing the seal to be fitted from the rear. The bearing preload piece then sits behind that. It seems to work well enough and I think I've got the pre preload correct. It's certainly the same as it was before with the old plate. With all that done I focused my attention on the mounting plate. I could have used a thick solid plate here but I didn't have anything big enough and a 3mm plate just the right size was close at hand. A bit of CAD work to get the rough design worked out got me going. This is just basic fabrication stuff really. I rolled the bendy bits on a mini ring roller and pressed a few pieces like the uh, cap for the bollard in the hydraulic press. I decided to add a support bearing to the plate to take the side load which the gearbox isn't really designed for. The support consists of a mehanite journal on the main shaft which runs in an oilite bushing pressed into a chromoly housing in the plate. The gearbox locates on the plate with an interference fit collar and gets retained by 8 M10 bolts. There's an extra row of support ribs where the bolts go through the plate that act as crush tubes. Ribs run between the bolts right to the edges, making the whole plate very rigid. The fair lead's made from more scrap bin bits and bobs. The supports were shaped with the plasma cutter and grinder and get secured to the plate with fitted M8 bolts and captive nuts. 
Mounting the motor was a little tricky. There's not a lot of room to work down there. Luckily, I have a spare V8, so I rake that out of storage and use it to get the pump mount figured out. It picks up on some existing mounting holes in the block with an adjustable steady at the rear. If you're wondering why I didn't use a single piece designed for the front plate, there are two reasons. Firstly, I wouldn't be able to swing that bigger part in the lathe. Secondly, it makes things quite a lot easier as the intermediate plate allows me some degree of freedom to move the motor. It fits snugly in the only space available at the front under the left bank. To drive it, I had to add a second pulley. There's room for this behind the existing pulley and on this engine they're pressed steel and could be welded. Cunning use of the plasma cutter in a rotary table got the second pulley sliced off and ready to be carefully welded on. Belt tension can be adjusted by moving the pump on its mounts like an alternator. The tank is an eBay oil catch tank drilled to accept some half BSP fittings. Time will tell if it's big enough though. To mount the tank I had to move the washer bottle. Its new home is on the Defender heater where it seems quite happy and actually works better than before. And now we come to the last major challenge. How to fix the gearbox, bollard and main shaft together. I had the piece of cold drawn 35mm bar set with the keyways already and I could have simply welded a collar onto the end and used a pin or similar to secure the other. However, if the shaft gets held in tension, compressing the stack of gearbox, bushing collar and bollard, the whole assembly becomes effectively much larger diameter for the purposes of resisting bending loads, so threading the ends seemed like the only sane option. The main shaft's really too long for the ML10, so I had to come up with a creative setup. Another sticking point was that my lathe has an imperial lead screw. The shaft is metric and I'd never cut threads on a lathe before. I guess it's the first time for everything. As the nuts are ever only going to be used with this shaft, I'm not going to worry too much about having a 16 TPI thread with a metric form on a 35mm shaft. <clears throat> it turned out to be quite a simple operation and I ended up with two perfectly threaded ends. Binge watching a -bomb videos pays off apparently. Two nuts are produced from a piece of 50mm hex bar stock in pretty much the same fashion, completing the shaft. The cap picks up on the top nut via a small threaded piece that it can be bolted down to. Then it's time for paint, assembly and the final moment of truth. The damn thing actually works. I bought some special natural fibre rope to go with it as the synthetic stuff apparently tends to suffer from the friction. I won't be winch challenging any time soon but I'll probably use it for dragging stuff onto the trailer and stuff like that. I built a front hitch on my Sankey so I'll just have to figure out a quick way to run the rope out to it. Anyway, thanks for watching, hope you found it interesting, informative or at least had a good laugh at my antics.